by Robert Frost, the first lesson in the second unit. It narrates the different attitudes of two persons, the poet and his neighbor, inventing a war. Let's analyze the poem, Menting War. The poem, Menting War, is written by Robert Frost, the greatest American poet of the 20th century. Robert Frost is an American poet, but he wrote this poem while he was living in New England. It's a dramatic narrative poem of 45 lines written in blank verse. Blank verse means a poem that doesn't have any rhyme. In this poem, two neighbors are minting a stone wall that separates their property. Here we can see two different persons, the poet and his neighbor with two different views. The poet doesn't like to have a wall between them. But his neighbor humbles him by saying that good fences make good neighbors. Good fences make good neighbors. Let's begin the poem by listening the voice of the poet Robert Frost. Mending wall. Something there is that doesn't love a wall. That sends the frozen ground swell under it and spills the upper boulders in the sun and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair where they have left not one stone on a stone, but they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the yelping dogs. The gaps, I mean, no one has seen them made or heard them made, but at spring mending time we find them there. Are you happy to hear the voice of Robert Frost reciting the poem? That's the American English. Okay, now look at the screen. Mending wall. Mending means repairing. You know, in this poem, the poet and his neighbor, they are going to repair a wall. Look at the picture, the type of the wall they are building. They are building a wall using some big stones. The poem begins with a riddle. Something there is that doesn't love a wall. There is something that doesn't love the wall. Can you guess what's the something there? Throughout the poem, the poet says about the things that doesn't love the wall. The speaker of the poem is the poet himself is not sure about the reason behind it. Let me read a few lines. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends a frozen ground swell under it and spills the upper boulders in the sun and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The poet finds some reasons. First, it may be due to the frozen ground. Perhaps water under the stones frozen during the winter season. It makes the upper boulders to fall down. Boulders are big stones. Then a gap is formed there and through this gap even two persons can pass abreast. Pass abreast means walking side by side. Let me read the next three lines. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair where they have left not one stone on a stone. The poet says the work of hunters is another thing. Sometimes the wall was broken by the hunters. As soon as they destroyed the wall, the poet would come and repair it. At that time, there was not one stone on a stone. Everything will be collapsed. Look at the next few lines. But they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the helping dogs. The gaps I mean, no one has seen them made or heard them made. But at spring menting time, we find them there. In these lines, the poet says the rabbits may be one reason to destroy the wall. The rabbits may be hiding under the stones in order to escape from the dogs, the helping dogs. Helping is the loud barking sound made by the hunting dogs and the hunting dogs will be with the hunters. They will not care about the destructions they make while hunting. However, the gaps on the wall have been made by something.
that is unseen or unheard now press the pause button in your video and read the above lines again silently have you understood shall we move on to the next lines but at spring mending time we find them there i let my neighbor know beyond the hill and on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again we keep the wall between us as we go anyway at the spring time they find them there you know in european countries normally there are four climates spring summer autumn and winter during winter everything will be covered with snow at spring the snow will be melted and they could see the surface to repair their wall that's their melting time the spring time look at the picture the house his neighbor stays beyond the hill and the poet will let him know about the destruction of the wall then they will fix a day to repair the wall and they will set the wall again between them have you understood okay next lines to each the boulders that have fallen to each and some are loose and some so nearly bowls we have to use a spell to make them balance stay where you are until our backs are turned we wear our fingers rough with handling them in these lines the poet says about the shape of the stones they used to build the wall some are loose and some so nearly bowls some stones are in the shape of the loaves loaves means bun or bread and some stones are in the shape of the bowls since these stones are in these shapes they have to use a spell or magic to fix the stones on the wall the poet says stay where you are until our backs are turned you stay there until we come back here the poet speaks to the stones as a person the stone is here personified the figure of speech is personification okay next line we wear our fingers rough with handling them oh just another kind of outdoor game one on a side it comes to little more their fingers become rough by handling with these heavy boulders it's a kind of outdoor game one person on one side and another on the other side shall we move on to the next lines they are where it is we do not need the wall he is all pine and i am apple orchard my apple trees will never get across and eat the corns under his pines i tell him he only says good fences make good neighbors in these lines the poet says that the wall is unnecessary because both of them have different kinds of plants the poet has apple orchard and his neighbor has pine trees orchard is fruit garden see the apple trees and pine trees the poet says his apple trees will never get across and eat the corns of his neighbor but his neighbor is stubborn that is having a strong decision by telling that good fences make good neighbors good fences make good neighbors okay next answer spring is the mischief in me and i wonder if i could put a notion in his head spring is the mischievous time in the life of the poet because during the spring time he has to come near the wall and to repair it along with his neighbor but he doesn't like to keep the wall there so he tries to put a notion or an idea in his neighbor's head by asking him why do they make good neighbors isn't it where there are cows but here there are no cows before i built a wall i would ask to know what i was walling in or walling out and to whom i was like to give offense the poet asks why do good fences make good neighbors 
Here there are no cows, so no need of a wall. Before building a wall, he must know what are the things he is keeping out and what are the things he is protecting by building a wall. That is, walling in and walling out, protecting and keeping out. And also he must know to whom he is giving offense. Offense is some wrong action that hurts you or another person. The poet has used a beautiful alliteration in the line, what I was walling in or walling out. See the consonant sound W is repeated there. What, was, walling in, walling out. In this poem, the wall stands as a symbol, a symbolic barrier that exists between people, groups, nations, based on discrimination of race, caste, creed, gender and religion. Look at the next lines. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I could say else to him, but it's not else exactly and I would rather he said it for himself. Here the poet says again, something there is that doesn't love a wall. That line is repeated, that's the refrain, repeated line. Something doesn't love the wall, that wants the wall to be destroyed. Here the poet says that may be the elves or the spirits. The invisible spirits around us. Then the poet says, I see him there, bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand like an old stone savage amped. He moves in darkness as it seems to me, not of wood solely and the shade of trees. When the neighbor brings the stone firmly by his hands and puts it on the top, the poet feels that he is an uncivilized man, a savage, like a stone age man. The term old stone savage amped is used to describe his neighbor because he seems to live in the stone age. The poet suggests that his neighbor has some connections with darkness. That's why he moves in darkness. Darkness is caused by not of wood solely, but the shades of the trees in the forest. Darkness is a symbol of evil and ignorance, a narrow-minded attitude. Look at the last lines of the poem. He will not go behind his father's saying, and he likes having thought of it so well. He says again, Good fences make good neighbors. His neighbor is traditional and he believes in his father's old adage that saying, good fences make good neighbors. The poem concludes with the saying, good fences make good neighbors. The line is repeated here, that's the refrain. One more line was also repeated. Can you remember now? Yes, something there is that doesn't love a wall. The poet questions the purpose of a wall twice in the poem by saying something there is that doesn't love a wall. But his neighbor replies twice with the saying, good fences make good neighbors. The poem conveys a powerful message of universal brotherhood. Let's discuss some poetic devices. In the line, some are loaves and some so nearly bowls, the poet compares the shape of the stones to loaves and bowls. Here, the figure of speech is metaphor. The poet says some are loaves, no doubt, so it is metaphor. If the poet says some are like loaves, then the figure of speech will be simile. In another line, he is all pine and I am apple orchard. There, the figure of speech is also a metaphor. Can you find out a simile from this poem? Towards the end of the poem, that is comparing two things using like or as? Yes, the poet compares his neighbor to an old stone savage man. In the line, in each hand like an old stone savage amped. 
There, the figure of speech is simile. Do you know hyperbole? That is exaggerating something. The poet has used a hyperbole in the line. We have to use a spell to make them balance. Here, the method of placing stones on the wall is exaggerated. The poet says they have to use a spell to make them balance. We have also discussed alliteration, personification and symbols in the poem. There is personification and metaphor in the line, He is all pine and I am apple or chard. Hope you have got an idea about the poem Minting Wall. I will be back soon with the notes and the appreciation.